Okay, this lesson is on the use of content aware fill. Um, before we get to that, I'm just going to process the rest of this image to get to the point where we're going to basically use content aware fill to get rid of the hair that's in the shadow part of the hat. To get rid of the hairs on these little bits of red uh, part of the hat that are underneath the uh, um, the hat and against the background and also this little bit of red hat here. So the first thing we need to do is look at the image and decide what needs to be done. So we need a few blemishes to get rid of, a little tiny one there. And um, the, the shoulders are too bright and the face is not bright enough. Obviously the hat acts as a bit of a barrier to allow the light to get in, whereas the chest is open to the, uh, to the light. So I do this very simply with uh, actions one of which I've made called 15% brighten. So if I press play, all it does is give me a duplicate layer that has been brightened to that extent. And of course, if I now paint B for brush, say five for 50% opacity with a soft edge brush, anywhere that I paint now, I'm basically painting in a brighter version of the, uh, uh, the image from the layer above. And if I hit 2 on the keyboard, I've now brought the opacity down to 20% and I'm just going to brighten the neck a little as well. Now I have done this with the softest brush available to me in Photoshop. And that's the sort of transition that you get from the areas that are um, brightened, which are white, to the areas that are partly brightened, which are grey, to the areas that are not brightened at all, which are black. But the uh, transition is not soft enough. I think that a decent judge would be able to spot, you know, for instance, the little halo there at the edge of the hat from that brightening. So what I can do is blur the mask, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we've painted quite a bit, so I'm going to need quite a high number. If it was only a little, you know, say on the eye, you would only blur a little bit. So I'm going to blur that by a hundred, and I typically blur it, you know, several times. Blurring it several times at a lesser value is much better than going in full hog at a much higher number because it keeps the center of the part of, of um, quite white. If you blur that all it just goes all gray so you can see it's still brighter in the middle and then it tails off nice and softly. We've lost that haloing there and I might just blur it another couple of times and once you've blurred it, you can then actually do image adjustments levels and just do, say, an auto levels. And that means that the middle is becomes wider. We've still got that lovely soft edge. So less is more. V7 takes a third off. Flatten image. And then I have an image that, or uh, an action that darkens by 10%. So underneath this black mask, the shoulders and well, the whole image has been darkened by 10%. B2 allows me to paint a 20% opacity with a soft brush. And anywhere I paint, I'm basically darkening incrementally and softly before, after, simple. And I'll just give that a bit of a blur. flatten image. So let's deal with any little uh, blemishes. Um, I'll do this very simply with, um, I'll just use the wee patch tool I think. I will now go to the uh, spot healing brush and just get rid of any little problem. So we've got a hair there. Once you spot that hair, you can't sort of unsee it. Maybe get rid of that hair there. Command zero makes the image fit the screen. Now there is a new new filter in Photoshop called Neural Filter. If I click on it. 
it has recognized the face so it only works if you get a blue box around the face then you can turn on skin smoothing and it's pretty good I have to say the the blur essentially controls the amount of texture in the face so we want texture so I'm going to bring that down and you can see the nice skin pores that have been retained there I'll maybe bring it down a little further to 16 the smoothness I'm quite happy with at the default setting so I'm just going to click OK on that and it puts it on a duplicate layer that you can turn off and on so it's a pretty good uh, filter for free let's just brighten the eye I'm just going to do that with a curves adjustment layer I'm not going to touch the curve I'm just going to put it into screen mode invert the mask by going command I B for brush not for 100% opacity with a small soft edge brush and I'm just going to paint now this will look mad obviously but I'm going to filter this or filter blur this now Gaussian blur obviously 100 gets rid of it completely uh, you just need about 6 maybe maybe more uh, we'll go with 10 and look at the light that has been brought into the eye there but that's at 100% V7 reduces the opacity happy with that a flatten image now content aware fill I'll demonstrate this to you first um, by um, I've made selections for the left side under the hat for the right side under the hat and for the hair on the hat so we'll do with the um, right side under the hat if I command click all this is is a polygonal lasso selection of this area um, and if I was just to simply do content aware fill on this I'll just make a duplicate layer if I go shift backspace to bring up the fill menu and say okay fill it with content aware it's going to be a mess because Photoshop has absolutely no idea what to fill it with it's sort of looking at this whole area thinking does he want me to fill it with skin does he want me to fill it with hat does he want me to fill it with hair background so it basically gives you a whole mishmash of um, crap basically so command Z on does that but with that selection live if I go to edit and down to content aware fill I can now tell Photoshop where to look at the moment the reason you got that whole mishmash which is previewed there is because this green area represents where Photoshop is looking when it wants to fill that in so I can say no I don't want you to look at skin at all so I just remove that and I don't want you to be looking at red hat I just want you to be looking at background and look what it has done now at the preview panel so I'm just going to click OK on that command D to deselect and there's that fixed in seconds let's now select the uh, hair on the red hat if I command click to bring up the selection this is just a very rough polygonal lasso selection of that part of the hat so again <clears throat> edit oh I need to make sure I'm on the um, the layer of the image so edit content aware fill exact same thing again I don't want you to be looking at skin don't want you to be looking at the background and I don't want you to be looking at the brighter part of the red hat I want you to be looking at the shadow part of the red hat perfect click OK command D look at that simple likewise the last one left side under the hat command click to load it as a selection click on the layer of the image edit content aware fill exact same principle applies get rid of the stuff that you don't want it to be fill, filling it in with leaving just the grey background command D to deselect simple absolutely simple 
We'll add an image. Let's just finish this off with a vignette. So I have a vignette action before, after. Flatten an image. Command J. Filter Nick software. Color FX Pro. Darken light and center. Click on the eye before after flatten image and if I now go into the history section and take a snapshot of where we are in a few minutes we've gone from that to that so hopefully you now understand how the content aware fill um, works. Uh, if you were just filling in something there, you can just simply make a selection and go shift backspace and go ahead with content to wear fill because it's surrounded by everything that's the same. But if you start getting into areas that are overlapped with different things such as skin, background or hat, then it has no idea where you want it to look. But that's where you can take control of it and specify to content aware fill where to look. So I hope that helps.